budgeting, budgeting, budgeting. Uh, most people think that budgeting is, is some kind of painful process that they have to do uh, in order to strangle with the money that they come across, um, to really hold on to it tight and don't let any of it go. Don't spend it, don't do this, don't do that. Um, in my experience, the more you, you, you strangle your money and hold on to it tightly and be stingy, the less you allow more money to come in. I don't promote being stingy. It's not my kind of thing. First thing, the word budgeting. I, I never call it by budgeting, to be honest. Um, to me, that's a, such an uninspiring word. Could you imagine going to the shop and, and, and wanting to have buy some certain thing and, and then realizing that, no, that doesn't fall into my budget? Very uninspiring. And when you have a budget, when you have to stick to a budget, you kind of feel poor, you feel weak and disempowered. I'm not about that. Um, I have a very specific strategy. It's a four-step plan. And I don't call it a budget. I call it a money management model. All right, so step one is to set your intentions. Um, that's the first step to do anything. You've got to set your intention of what you want to do, what you're trying to achieve. So many people who I talk to who are setting budgets and, and trying to do this kind of thing are setting them to, one, get out of debt repay loans, and then just get back to like some kind of middle ground where they don't owe anyone anything. Because anyone who's actually got out of debt before will, will know that once you get there, it's a really good feeling for all of about nine minutes, and then you realize, shit, I'm still poor as fuck. Getting rid of your debt is a, is a good step in the right direction, but it's not a fulfilling goal. It's, it's once you get out of debt, you're still at, you're still at neutral. It's not a it's not a, a, an abundance. It's not an empowered state of financial well-being. It's uh it's very uninspiring. I encourage people not to have their their intention of to get out of debt or to pay off their loans. I encourage people to set their intention to have financial freedom, to have financial independence, to build financial abundance and empowerment. That's that's the most inspiring goal you, you can set financially. To be empowered, to, to be financially free, to choose what you want to do with your day, to not have to go to work work if you so choose not to. Remember, if you're in a hole financially, if you're in the negative, if you're in debt, the, the way out of that is to build income, build wealth, and invest. That's it. That's the goal. That's the, that gets you out of the debt and that, and that puts you into a, into a place of empowerment, financial empowerment. Um, getting out of debt as the end goal is, is very unfulfilling. And if you actually do get out of debt, you'll realize that. Step two. Focus on what you're spending your money on and not how you're saving money. If anyone's ever taken a diet and then they get a, a list of criteria of what they can and can't eat, imagine going through a diet list and saying, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat this, you can't eat... Miserable. No one wants to do it, no one wants to stick to it. And you can do it for a bit until your willpower gives up and then you're like, shit, fuck, I'm gonna go and eat this cake. It's the same with finances, it's the same with budgeting or money management. Um, focus on what you can spend your money on rather than what you, ha what you have to save and what you have to cut out. No one wants to know about what you have to cut out. It's not inspiring. People want to be inspired. And there is a way, even if you have a low income, there is a way to divvy up your finances and, and spend it in a way that gets results. There's a ratio of how you can spend your money to get the best results. And it doesn't matter if your income's $100 a week or $100,000 a week. There is a ratio of how you can spend that income to bring about the best results possible. It's almost like a, a golden ratio, if you like. Step three, the golden ratio. All right, so this is the part where you kind of want to maybe get a pen and paper and write this down. Um, IP students, you'll know from lesson 10 of the IP course. This is in there. This is the framework of the golden ratio of the, of the money management method that we use. Poor people, uh, financially disempowered people, focus on saving, holding on, and locking down everything they own, and, and, and don't let anyone freaking touch it. Um, that's, their, that's their mentality, that's their financial mindset. And, and, it, and it's rooted in a, in a mindset of scarcity. They think that some disaster is going to happen in the future. They think that there's not going to be any money, and they, and they want to save for a rainy day. This kind of mentality, right? Um, wealthy people, on the other hand, um, financially empowered people, they focus on spending. How can they spend their money? but spending it wisely. Saving cash up in a big pile in some kind of bank account, is, is, it's kind of like manure. If it sits in a big pile, it stinks, but if you spread it out and spread it around wisely, it makes stuff grow. I never ever promote to my students how to save cash in some kind of big pile or some kind of hidden bank account. Um, I, I'm not about that. I, I teach students how to spend money and I teach them how to spend it wisely. Um, and I have a very specific breakdown of, of six accounts that I break up all of the income I make up and I put it into these accounts and I spend it accordingly into different areas. 
So here's the ratio of how I break up income. Um, the first account is necessities, and that represents 50% of your income. Um, necessities are things like food, shelter, and clothing. It's the things that you, you really need to buy to stay alive. Your second account is your investment account, um, which represents 10% of all the income you make to be funneled into investments and strategies whereby you can increase your income and increase your net worth outside of your regular day job. Um, look, the truth is if you're relying on just a day job and just a superannuation or 401k as a retirement plan, um, you are going to be living just over the poverty line, um, to be fair. The third account is long-term spendings. This is an account that we set up and put 10% of all of our income into, and, and we move toward a long-term spending goal. It's something that we're going to buy in the future, something that inspires us, something that really gets us up and motivated. It could be a watch, it could be a car, it could be a vacation or a trip or a pair of shoes or a dress. It could be anything like that, anything that inspires us, that, that is kind of a big ticket item that we can buy or that we can purchase in the future. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been on a vacation or planned a vacation two, three, four months in the future. Looking forward to the vacation is half the fun of, of actually being on the vacation. Um, the, the, having something to look forward to is so important, and especially with finances, if you don't have something to look forward to, you can easily get down and beat yourself down into this sort of grind where you're just working and working and working. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. Having a long-term spendings account is, a, is the light at the end of the tunnel. It is a, it's a long-term goal that you can be saving for and moving toward 10% of your income every week or every month um, and moving toward something that you really truly want, something that really inspires you. The fourth account is the education account. Um, this represents 10% of all the income we make to be funneled into books, courses, seminars, DVDs, audio tapes, um, and, and th anything that could really increase our knowledge, awareness, and wisdom about the world around us. Um, the education account is probably my favorite account. It, it's the one that's made the biggest difference in my life, to be fair. I, I, I spend a lot of money on education. It, it, it's very, very important to me. It's a very high value of mine. But literally three hours ago, I just spent about $20,000 um, on a course and on flights and on accommodation um, to the next educational thing that I'm going to undergo with Robin. I'm so incredibly excited. It's going to be in South Africa. We're flying out in June. Uh, we'll probably spend the majority of June in South Africa to do this. I literally go around the world looking for the knowledge, pursuing the knowledge and pursuing the education. I find the people who are the smartest people with the best results and I pay whatever the hell it costs to learn from them. The fifth account is your play account. It's 10% of all your income that you get to put into account that you have to literally go and blow the cash. Uh, blow it on anything. Go and get a massage. Go and buy a ridiculous watch or a ridiculous dress or a pair of shoes. Go and blow the cash. Go and blow the cash on something that makes you feel really good. Because the truth is this, if you try to restrict something that you really really intrinsically want to do, you're going to feel bad, you're going to feel guilty. The thing is, you're going to, when your willpower wears out, you're going to go and buy that fucking thing anyway. You may as well just have an account where you dedicate a certain amount, 10% of your income, to just blow the cash. Get the retail therapy out of your veins, get it out of your system. Honestly, it's a very clever way to do it because you're going to spend the money anyway, but with having a play account, you set yourself up in a way that you could literally spend and blow a certain amount every single week and because you have to spend it, you have to blow it, there's no guilt attached to it. Um, one of the most destructive things and with budgeting or with saving money or trying to accumulate wealth and get out of the rat race is the guilt associated with going and spending money that you shouldn't have necessarily spent. I don't believe in that kind of restriction. I believe in spending it. If you want to do something, you need to do it. Just do it wisely. Um, that's my kind of philosophy. So do it wisely. Spend the money. Blow the money if you have to. But do it wisely. Limit it. Spend 10% of all of your income on blowing cash. And the sixth account is the give account. It represents the final 10% of all the income you make to be put into an account that grows over time that allows you to look into the environment and see people and scenarios and families and, and, and events where they need your money and they need your capital more than what you do. Um, and allows you to, to, it gives you a platform whereby you can give your money away in a way that makes you feel rich and abundant and, and, and loving and giving. Um, let me give you an example. Imagine showing up at a service station to fill your car with gas and going into the to the cashier and paying for your fuel and realizing that there's a guy next to you also filling up his car. 
Imagine being able to go and say, hey, I have $100 in this give account. I've got to give it away. I want to pay for that guy's fuel. Um, they will let you do that. And you can pay for that and then you can walk back to your car and give him a smile. And he'll never ever know in a million years what just happened. And he'll never ever get to thank you. But when he goes into the cashier to pay for his fuel and the, and the cashier announces that the guy that just left paid for you. That's, an, that's such an incredible powerful feeling. That's such an abundant energy. That's such an abundant frequency that you can be vibrating on by taking such actions. The give account is the most rewarding of all. The fourth step is to automate. Um, autonomy is the key to success in this entire process. Um, this means going to your bank today or tomorrow and saying, hey, I want to set up these six bank accounts and I want my income account to automatically wire 50% here, 10% there, 10% there, 10% there. Have it done automatically. If you rely on yourself, it's not going to get done. Get it done automatically. Get it done by an automatic transfer every week or every two weeks or every month. Whenever you get paid, get it done automatically. I've been managing my money like this since I was a first year electrical apprentice earning $260 a week. Um, and I did it all the way through to the first time I made $50,000 in a single month. Um, and when that happened, I kind of got a bit, a bit loose with how I spent my money. Um, and over the next few months, I kind of, I spent it pretty recklessly, or at least I thought, until I looked back and I realized that the way I was spending my money was in fact in line with this particular method, was in fact in line with this particular breakdown of how I spent my income. And what I have realized is that this creates a habit. When you start to spend your money in these particular ways and put, funnel your income into these particular accounts, you develop a habit. You develop a habit of how you spend your money. And this particular ratio, what I call the golden ratio, is a very, very, very effective ratio of how to spend money to get really fantastic, incredible results. In learning to develop this particular money management method, um, you can learn to not be such a stingy mother with your money. And, and instead of grabbing onto your money and, and, and being stingy and not wanting anything to let into it, you instead have a more relaxed view uh, of, 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 the, of the act of cash flow. Cash flows in, cash flows out. And the more that you relax it and, and, and be able to have cash flow in and out, you allow yourself to earn more money on top of what you already have. And you don't have to cash it. You don't have to like you're restricted like this. Um, let it be, let it flow in, let it flow out. But be wise about how you let it flow out.